In this example, we will record the time resolved emission spectrum of tryptophan. We will start by calling the dress wizard. The first step is to input the sample name. And select the solvent. We can then select the user, switch on temperature control and set the temperature. The stirrer is not needed so we leave it off. We select the proper excitation source, in this case a 280 nanometer LED, and the range of the detection. We will use the UV blue PMT. We select the wavelength range from 300 to 460 nanometers and a step size of 5 nanometers. Our time resolved emission spectra will consist of 33 steps. We then proceed to optimize the parameters. In this step, the wizard will optimize various parameters automatically. First, it records a spectrum to find the emission maximum. Once the spectrum is recorded, it will move the monochromator to the maximum and optimizes various TCSPC settings, like repetition rate, monochromator slit width, and so on. When the optimizer has found the best settings for the sample, we can proceed to record the time resolved emission spectrum. We here get a warning that the highest laser repetition rate is still too low. This is because the fluorescence decay is already finished after roughly 50 nanoseconds. Therefore we could go with a repetition rate of 20 MHz. The here used 280 nanometer LED however only supports a repetition rate of up to 10 MHz. This only makes the acquisition process somewhat slower than it theoretically needs to be. Since we can however not remedy the situation, we will ignore the warning and proceed. A first decay is recorded and before actually starting the measurement, the wizard suggests an acquisition time and it also gives us the opportunity to tweak this time. Here it suggests as an integration time of 30 seconds, which will leave us with a measurement time of below 20 minutes. If we are happy with the settings, we can start the acquisition. Now the wizard records decay histograms for the wavelength range that we have selected. We can monitor the progress of the experiment via the display here on the left, showing the momentary measuring conditions as the wavelengths at this time. For comparison, the most intense and the least intense decay is shown together with the decay being acquired at the moment. The bottom panel shows the emission spectrum as we proceed through the wavelengths range selected previously. After the wizard has finished recording the time resolved emission spectrum, the next step would be recording the instrumental response function. If we choose not to, we can always select save and exit and terminate the measurement without recording the instrumental response function. Here, however, we will record the instrumental response function, so the next step will be setting up the conditions for the instrumental response function measurement. The wizard automatically moves the sample changer to position 4, which contains a cuvette with a Ludox solution. During the optimization process, the wizard here leaves most of the settings untouched. The only element that is adjusted during this step is the emission attenuator. When the optimization is finished, we can proceed to the last step and acquire the instrumental response function. Finally, we select to save the acquired data and exit the wizard. This creates a container containing all the measurement data in our workspace here in the left pane of the EasyTau software. To analyze the data, we simply select the container and launch FluoFit by pressing the FluoFit button. FluoFit loads with the selected data set and also suggests an appropriate fitting model. In this case here, an exponential reconvolution fit with three exponentials. We can use the vertical bars to select the fitting range 
and then use the globe icon to apply this fitting range to the whole dataset. By pressing the zoom button, Fluofit automatically zooms into the selected data range. We can use the dataset controls to browse through the individual DK histograms contained in the dataset. Selecting the proper start parameters speeds up the fitting process. Therefore, I will select the three expected fluorescence lifetimes. I also select these three components to be global fitting parameters. This means that these three fluorescence lifetimes shall be present in every single one of the 33 acquired decays. We will leave the rest of the parameters to float freely and individually. Pressing the start button starts the global fitting procedure. After the fit has finished, we can browse through the data set and judge the fitting quality based on the residuals displayed for each of the decay curve of our data set. Finally, we can also plot the evolution of selected non-global parameters as they change with the wavelength. Here we select the intensities of the three exponentials. Closing Fluofit takes us back to the EasyTau software. The result of our fitting session automatically gets attached to our measurement container.